Awesome! What is up, One Life community? It's Matt Aitchison here, and man, we're uh, we're circling back around on one month, getting close to one month after our amazing Philly conference. Hopefully, we got some uh, people new that um, joined our community from Philly. We had a rock and seminar. The energy was great. The people were awesome. The content that was flying around was was really cool. And just the overall to feel the overall. Gosh, I just want to say the energy of the community and, and the collectivity of idea sharing and just seeing people hungry to improve and take their game up to the next level was uh, was fun to be a part of. So we're excited to bring um, our next Google Hangout topic, which really uh, goes hand in hand with a lot of the stuff we were preaching and talking about and masterminding on at the conference, which is is really finding a, a platform to um, really enhance the ability of the individual and um, create more of a, a collective genius, as we like to call it, by creating and facilitating a mastermind group. So this month's uh, webinar, we're going to kind of just be digging into that a little bit. We're going to be talking uh, to a gentleman who has become a great friend of mine but is also an amazing mentor and in my opinion is one of the best out there for facilitating and creating a mastermind group and has done it on a very very high level in many capacities we got good old Mike McCarthy on board what's up Mikey hey thanks Matt appreciate it what's up one life community happy to uh, be on the call the Google hangout whatever this is today my my first time ever using a Google hangout so I'm excited, and uh, it's like stepping into the future, so love it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we're going to be talking about today is we got really three main topics. One, we're going to be talking about why start a mastermind group. What is what is so great about a mastermind group? Um, we'll be talking about kind of the uh, how and the who and, and what. So we're going to be breaking these down. We're going to do it. We have, um, and you can see on the main page, uh, we have some PowerPoint slides if you do want to follow along there or get out a note, uh, notepad and paper and we're just going to be kind of truly we thought it'd be fitting to mastermind on the topic of masterminding and we've done this multiple times in our own groups but uh, many people want to know why start a mastermind group um, and I'm sure if I were to ask this question I can't see you guys raise your hands but I would say how many people have heard of the sum of the five and the sum of the five is basically the the idea of birds of a feather flock together or you are who you hang out with um, the sum of the five on a more um, you know deeper level is if you were to average out say the salary or it's hard to say from a mindset perspective or an activity perspective but let's just say you're the of the four people you hang out with, five people you hang out with the most, if you're hanging out with a bunch of people who are negative, you're probably going to be the sixth person that is negative. If you are hanging out with five people that are extremely successful and are positive on a daily basis and attract opportunity and think in abundance, you're probably going to be the sixth person. So that's kind of the idea and the concept of the sum of the five, the law of the five, is you become who you hang out with. So. Why start a mastermind group? Well, initially when I was seeking it out, I know Mike and I have talked about this before, is you seek out a mastermind group to enlighten yourself. Um, And that's one of the things on the next slide that we talk about is really um, your life is a direct reflection of the expectations of your peer group. So creating an opportunity through a mastermind group to collectively raise your game because of the people you're hanging around with is extremely important. What do you feel about that, Mike? Yeah, let's go to the next slide too, Andy, if we can there um, for for that. But yeah, I think, you know, if your peers have high expectations for you and they remind you of who you, you know, said you wanted to be and, and, and maybe who we are inside because that's truly important. If they can remind us of that, I think it helps us to stay on our path and continue our journey of, you know, having a one life fully lived. And I think that's t- really ties into the community that Tim Rhodes is, is built here 
and and with the help of so many others is you know we're supporting each other because you know when you step into our community you have a higher expectation um, of yourself because everyone else does so I, I just like that concept a lot because we really are a reflection of the people we hang out with just to, to that other point on the previous slide as well as we're gonna be who we hang out with we're a reflection of them and it's really a reflection of their expectations of the people that they surround themselves with and you know Matt you've done an amazing job especially over the last year of surrounding yourself with amazing people and it's been fun to watch you grow because you're like a sponge and you're always ready to learn from the people you've surrounded yourself with and I think that 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 growth that we've seen in in you and that I've experienced when I do that it's it's just amazing what you can accomplish when other people expect more from you absolutely and then you know it kinda leads into the next slide Andy um, when we're talking about why starting a mastermind group and, and you talked about the growth that's happening in a year um, if we go about the four levels of competence and consciousness and we've I'm, I believe I've dived into those a little bit uh, before but for you guys out there I'm just gonna do a quick refresher we talk about the four levels of, of consciousness and competence and there is unconscious incompetence where we talk about you just don't know what you don't know. A yeah. year ago, there was a ton of stuff in not only business, um, but my health, my you know relationships, where I just didn't know what I didn't know. So I was unconsciously incompetent in certain areas. Through my mastermind group, I've expanded my awareness, and I now know what I don't know. A lot of the things in my mastermind group and being around people who force me to elevate my thinking, my game, is I am now aware of the things I don't know. So I'm consciously incompetent. So the next level of moving from unconscious incompetence to now knowing what I don't know and being consciously incompetent, I want to consciously become competent at those things. So my mastermind group and why I've plugged in and been able to um, see specific results in myself and you see it in many mastermind groups when people plug in is now they start building on skills and educational pieces and tools and resources and knowledge that they knew they didn't know and now they want to master it and yeah. essentially through that mastermind group now I am walking talking and acting exactly how I've portrayed myself wanting to be and you guys have helped me not only learn that but now I'm trying to embody that and become that which is the fourth level of being unconsciously competent where now I don't have to think about doing it it's like riding a bike I just hop on and I know exactly what motions and activities and and mindset and thinking goes along with that activity so that's the one thing I would say that has been most influential about mastermind groups is you take yourself through this process and eventually you start becoming something completely different and better than you were before because of the reflection and the accountability and the goals that your mastermind group holds you to. Wouldn't you agree, Mike? Yeah, yeah I love that, Matt. It's such an important part of this is um, in going through those levels of competency and the levels that we learn, it's, you know, even for me still, it's, um, it's it's a reminder of when I get to that fourth level to go back to the third level right because when we're on that fourth level and we're kind of in autopilot and we think we know then it's it's only a matter of time before we we realize there's still more to know out there and so I, I try to put keep myself in that area where I'm I'm consciously incompetent because you know and even um, like the way of the Buddha is to have the beginner mind, right? To always view things like you're figuring it out and you're studying it with that level of intensity because when we get to that point where we think we know, then we're in trouble. And what, you know, and and the same token, that moment when we finally realize that we don't know anything, when we admit to ourselves that we don't know that much and that what we do know is the tip of the iceberg and what we don't know is really everything else which is a lot um, there's a freeing moment in that because then you realize you don't have to have all the answers and you can surround yourself with people that do because that's true intelligence is 
is knowing that we don't know that much. It's impossible to know everything, especially in today's world. So that that's how I look at it, Matt. But you did a great job of laying that out um, with the four levels as well. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, and you even just touched on it. You know, everybody is uh, – Tim has been – one influential person and mentor for me significantly over the last year in one capacity and you have been a mentor and peer in one capacity and other people in our mastermind group have been a mentor so it's 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 this thing where everybody has their own genius and everybody is a black belt in some way shape or form in their own area of life so yeah, that's that. That's the great thing about masterminding is everybody has an A++ game in some way, shape, or form to bring to the table. And if you can collectively bring together people with very unique, diverse, yet powerful skill sets together, that's where the power of a mastermind group is. On paper, you can't even really map out the potential behind a collective group of people with resources, knowledge, and mindset, and energy, and, and the list goes on. Yeah. But, but that's that was one of the reasons why I was so excited to, about joining a mastermind group, and then also moving forward and creating, you know, sub mastermind groups or whatever it may be, is because I'm excited to learn from the other people that are much better in the areas than I am in 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 extracting that knowledge, and then vice versa bringing something of value to their life in an area that they may so it's it's also it's not about getting 10 people in the same room who all do the same thing which there is a mastermind you know uh, strategy like that there's also more diverse strategies where you want to have experts in, in many different um, areas of life and when you surround yourself with diverse genius that's when I think you know you see the the spider web go a lot further and deeper um, so that's you know that's that's another reason why people obviously start mastermind groups and the power behind them topics or you can create some some great diversity and have a, a far-reaching mastermind group so why start one these are some of the things we're going over with you guys that we've seen through our personal experiences I want to disclaim that um, some have worked, some haven't. We've had some great experiences and some where we would probably do things differently. So take what you want from this. The goal is to really take a few nuggets and give you guys a blueprint and a framework to at least start somewhere. And then maybe, you know, there's some things that you want to add or some things where you want to put your own flavor on it. Um, there is no one size fits all for a mastermind group so just keep that in mind as you guys are going through the process of developing your own and creating your own ideas for it that's we just want to share some of our experiences and things that have worked well for us yep. absolutely there's no cookie cutter turnkey solution it's getting one or more people together <laughs> to talk about ideas and 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 expand your awareness so so as we move to the last kind of step on you know why start a mastermind group obviously the collective power and resources that um, are created within a, a magical and many people I think you guys can attest the power behind a, a, a good mastermind group is is almost scary because of the abundance uh, of the group and how everybody shows up and the network I mean the opportunity that flows through mastermind groups not only um, tangible monetary opportunity but the opportunities that we have as human beings to naturally become better and more um, fulfilled and more productive and more generous I mean all of these byproducts of a good amazing mastermind group are amazing and that's what I love about what the One Life community has done is there our community the One Life community is technically a massive mastermind group and we're, we're now starting to find little ways of creating sub mastermind groups within so that's why we're creating this um, One Life um, webinar is we want to start seeing now these these really specific mastermind groups in different areas around the country or different topics or um, categories that people are passionate about and let's start seeing what magic comes from those so um, 
as we move into kind of the what is a mastermind group, I want to leave you guys with this, is why do people start mastermind groups? Well, we, 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 start, we start the mastermind group to create momentum and to create momentum in a change where um, we will start to see that snowball effect that it's kind of like the mentality of one plus one is, is usually equals two. In a mastermind group, the idea is always to make one plus one equal three. So it's, it's, if you're just getting together with some person and um, you're masterminding, that's awesome, but when you create something that is more powerful than the two individuals can create by themselves, that's when you're on to something um, exciting that creates momentum outside of the individual. Awesome. So, Mike, why don't you dive uh, into a, a little bit on, and Mike's going to give a, somewhat of a case study on his mastermind group. Um, he'll talk about GoBundance. He'll talk about some of his uh, smaller mastermind groups and hopefully give you guys some good tools to implement, whether it's a five-person mastermind group or you have the vision of taking it to 100 plus. Uh, Mikey is the man who has done it all, and I'm um, glad you're here to share with us, Mike. Awesome. Thanks. So, you know, just going into the topic of what a mastermind group is, is the first time I ever heard of a mastermind group, it was in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I read that book when I was 18, and I remember I understood about 25% of the book at that point. And I think um, the one thing that stood out more than anything was this idea of coordinating knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. And I just, I just remember having this sort of freeing moment because I realized that if I could get to know really great people and enrich their lives and help them in some way, that they would be able to help me. And that that was an underlying factor um, for most successful people. And uh, Matt alluded to this earlier, you know, the exact quote that Napoleon Hill shared was, um, no two minds ever come together without thereby creating a third invisible, intangible force which may be likened to a third mind. And I think that that's, um, that's really all it is. So just to simplify it for everybody, it's it's – it's getting two or more people together to brainstorm, to think big, to dream big, to plan something, um, to hold each other accountable to nutrition goals or fitness goals or to being a better father, husband, mother, daughter, whatever it may be. And, and so we can simplify it down to a peer group, a, uh, a peer partner, an accountability partner, a, um, a mentor to some degree. It's a slightly different relationship with respect to that, but definitely in those situations, you still have a, um, a, a situation where the mentor is um, receiving a lot, but they're also giving energy because they're hungry and they're listening and they're implementing. So there's this great um, uh, ability in today's world for us to connect with people and have mastermind Facebook groups, mastermind Google Hangouts like we're doing right now. Um, it's, it's possible for you to do uh, webinars to, to get on a conference call together you know, once a week, but you can do it virtually, you can do it in person. So I'm going to share with you kind of what my mastermind group can, consists of right now and just know that if I would have shared what it was a year ago, or six months ago it would have been different. So in some regard, if you get a group of people that are committed to something similar, and as long as you keep the group flexible and you don't try to rule it, you try to let the people decide, you really make it a uh, democratic situation where everybody has a say in what the agenda should be and what activities you do and how it should be run, I think that gives it a good chance of survival. Um, if you come in and it's too rigid and you have it all laid out, but the, it doesn't, it's not effective for the people, you have to be aware of that. So you got to get feedback. You have to talk with your, your group about how it's going and get feedback. I know Matt's somebody who's constantly giving 
um, us feedback in, a, in another group we started that's nationwide called GoBundance that I'm sure many of you have heard of, but you know, Matt's always giving us great feedback on how we can make that a better mastermind group for our members. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, just a quick overview of the diversity of our group is we've got people from all kinds of different fields. Um, we can definitely get even more diverse than we are now, but the one thread with our group that, that, that everybody has in common is we're all GoBundance elite members, and that really means we're all leaders in a specific field or industry and, and have a pretty, uh, pretty well-established track record of success. So that's one common thread. If we go to the next slide, um, you'll see what we do, and even since we wrote um, this PowerPoint slide, um, if you go to the next slide, Andy, um, if we on this slide, we've even changed since we wrote this how we do things. So right now it says a monthly meeting that's four hours at a restaurant, and we actually made it a six-hour meeting once a month now that has three hours of activity where a member gets to plan an activity for us for that month. And then we have a, 30, uh, a two to three hour mastermind dinner that follows it. So we've already, we keep, remember I mentioned shifting the, to meet the needs of the group and listening to the feedback. So that was part of the shift. But we do get together once a month. And what we definitely nail is we talk about, we each get a chance to share our business priorities, our career priorities, and then our personal priorities, what we're working on. And it's not everything, it's the one or two things that, that are most important to you right now where you need help, support, or you want to just share how you're doing in those areas with respect to those priorities. And then a 30-day goal. Um, one of the powers, uh, uh, the most powerful things about a mastermind group is the accountability, is setting a 30-day goal because then and it doesn't have to be 30, it could be 60, it could be 100 days, but we do a 30-day goal because that's when we're all going to see each other again is 30 days later. So that's how we've set that up. Um, we do lots of things in our group. We receive help on different topics. We break into small groups. At one point, we were um, sharing some of our journals and what we, how we were doing in seven different areas uh, of our life. Um, we also have our spouses... Um, get together and do activities and go out and do things together at times. Um, we do a quarterly family fun thing and we we do things together where the members of our group and our entire families get together and do um, some fun family activities. So it's really about, um, in my case, taking a lifestyle group that are similar to me and who will push me and surrounding myself with them so that um, I can have great friends and people to do uh, everything that you can imagine to do in life, which to me is the epitome of one life fully lived, is being around great people and doing amazing things. So that's a component of the group that, that I've um, created and, and had a lot of help doing it with our members um, helping me to do that. So I give a lot of the credit to them. Um, if we go to the next slide, you know, Right now, what I want you to do is I want you to get out a piece of paper and let's kind of make this, uh, you know, an active sort of Google Hangout where you're you're really thinking about this because this is going to set you up to go start a, a mastermind group that can help you with your goals. So, what what is your number one personal goal right now? What is it that you're striving for most? And um, you know, Matt, when I ask people that question, sometimes they have a, a trouble choosing which one to put down and I just read an amazing book called Bold and he, one of the laws in there was if you're given two choices choose both so go ahead and write down both of them if those are your priorities but what you don't want is to get so many priorities listed that you don't get clear on what's most important if I have a list of ten priorities or even five sometimes it gets unclear to me what what's most important so usually my personal priority has to do with my relationships or with my um, uh, my health and fitness because those are really the most personal areas that I, I'm focused on growing when it's 
my number one career goal or career opportunity or, or whatever that is for you, it's going to be the goals I need to hit in my main business or career opportunity to go to the next level. That's probably going to be around the priority and uh, uh, it's going to be based on a result and activities that I need to, to do in order to get to that result. So I get really clear on both of these, number one and two, what's the result and what's the activity that will lead to that result. And then third, it is given those the, both of those two things, here's what I need more, most um, help in attaining. This is the accountability piece where the next time I show up to this meeting, I need to have, um, I need to have done what I say I'm gonna do or there's probably a penalty. And I'm sh I've paid penalties before. I'm sure Matt, you've paid some penalties in some of your mastermind groups. But you know, there there needs to be a consequence. But the number one consequence for me is that the people in my group need to actually care that they've said they're going to do something, and I need to see that most of the time they're going to either hit that uh, that standard or they're gonna they're gonna own up to whatever the penalty is reset and then go make it happen you know sometimes we set 30-day goals and they're the wrong goal so it's okay to decide hey that's not what I wanted but you have to be careful it's a thin line between that and giving up on something because it, it you just were lazy or didn't want to do it and we've all been there so um, what I want you to think about now is if you get clear on these three things, um, we can move, and we're going to do this later in the, the uh, Google Hangout here, is you can get clear on sharing this with somebody. So I'm going to challenge you in the next 24 hours to find some people who you can share your personal priorities, your career priorities, and something that you need held accountable to in the next 30, 60, or 90 days. And you can reach out to people on the, in the One Life community and post if you, if you want to connect with somebody who can be your accountability partner or someone you can work with. Um, but, but start working on one, two, and three as we're talking through this. And, uh, and let's go to the next slide, Andy. So yeah, one and thing, as you ahead, move Matt. on, Mike, I want to just um, make a quick little note. You touched on it a little bit, and I know we'll touch on it more. Um, this, this last point that you made is that's the power of our community, right? Is we have many people, um, in our community already that are looking to form mastermind groups, depending on the topic or, um, location or whatever it may be. So I encourage everybody reach out, post something on the One Life community, Tim, myself, uh, other people who are, you know, plugged into the network will, um, make sure we're looking out for those posts and connecting you to the right people as well if we think that um, there may be some people that should should be collaborating on some stuff like this. So uh, just make a note, post something in the One Life community, and, and we'll get kind of that process going. Yeah, that's awesome. I, and I love that part of this is that you're are, all of you are already, whoever's listening to this, already connected to a community of people who are willing to to pair up and partner with you and, and exchange the energy and that that's that's awesome. So that's the battle. Yeah, so we've kind of, we've talked about why to start a mastermind group. We've talked about what a mastermind group can look like and kind of gave you some some examples and it's really diverse, you know. That's one point that we really made is it is don't 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 envision that it has to be a certain way. Just be open to the possibilities of what you and one or more people can do when you're in that spirit of harmony for the definite a, a, a attainment of a, of a purpose. So how to start a mastermind group, right, getting into some of the nuts and bolts, um, is the first thing is, is kind of a surrender, you know, a willingness to go through the steps of what I'm going to share with you. And you've all seen... Um, probably as kids, you know, if you don't have kids, you probably were a kid at one one point in your life, right? So, um, so uh, when you were a kid, there was this game called Barrel of Monkeys, and you know, each monkey has its arm up and down, and it's designed so that it's always, you know, giving a hand up and a hand down, so to speak. And I've got to give credit because I, I learned this from Pat Hyban. 
Um, I want to make sure credit goes w where it's due. And if you haven't checked out his his podcast, it's awesome as well. So, um, so Pat said, you know, there's there's people that need help up, and there's people that that need to also be helping each other people up, and that 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 rule applies to everybody. So I think the way you earn the right to ask other people for help for yourself is you have to be able to first be willing to help other people. So you need to have a generous spirit. You need to really be somebody who is not just willing to help people so you can get something, but be there and be a force for good in your communities, when you're at the grocery store, when you're in the world, in your own homes, in your own minds, and generous even with yourself is we need to be a loving, caring, generous community that is that is our number one focus is really helping people. And if you come from that place, I think that's the first step. It kind of earns you the right to, to ask for help, right? To ask others to help you. And then I think that the next thing we have to be willing to do is to help ourselves. That means we have to be willing to take our, our, a stand for our own results, do what we say we're going to do, and really follow the advice that we're getting because I can tell you that there's nothing more frustrating than having a, a mastermind group where certain people are saying that they want help and they're getting good advice but they're not listening to the advice or taking action on it and I think we have to be willing to step up and really help ourselves own our results and do what we say we're gonna do I think also when we've done those first two things we, we've earned the right to then ask other people for help. We've helped them. We've been willing to, to step up and do what we need to do for ourselves. And then we have to make sure that we're willing um, um, to, act, you know, to do that. And then also, we have to ask people for help. A lot of us um, can, can help others, and we're generous, and we want help. And we, re we don't realize we've earned the right to do it. And we've got to be willing to allow people to help us and a go ask for help. And when we do that, it's a beautiful cycle that, the, that everybody is helping somebody else. And I think that's part of the, the Share It program for One Life that we're going to be rolling out you know, later this year is, is we want to be a community of people that are helping each other and helping ourselves. And... When we do that, we, we form the metaphor for that barrel of monkeys analogy. And what it is is, if you notice, every monkey is helping another monkey up in the string. And there's only one monkey that's not helping any other monkey up. And which monkey is that? It's the one at the bottom, right? And so, you know, if you're at the bottom and, and you're not helping anyone else out, that's where you need to start is be a, someone who's out there trying to help others, and then you're going to have somebody pulling you up all the time when that happens. Um, yeah. I love that metaphor. It's, it's so fitting for obviously what One Life is all about. And as you went through these, these key little topics, I think some of the key ingredients to simplify is, you know, what is your intention for getting into a mastermind group? Making sure that it's a, it's a genuine intention is, I think, very important. If it's all about you, then you're just that monkey with the one arm up, and you don't have that one arm down. And, the, and, and that's, I think, really important for uh, creating the vibe and the, I guess, expectation of what the mastermind group feel and community is all about. Um, and it's, it's about contribution. And when you contribute it not only reaffirms and sharpens your own skill sets, but you're also growing as a process of contributing. So I think that's really important to keep in mind that by giving back, you are absolutely improving as an individual, um, whether that's a skill set, um, a new knowledge that you're gaining or, or educating yourself on, but you're also creating more opportunity for other people, which I think is extremely important in a mastermind. The second is you need to be vulnerable. Um, you have to give yourself permission, and, and that, that also goes hand-in-hand hand with creating an environment that allows and invites that vulnerability because I think that's when real growth happens in a mastermind group is we can throw around ideas all day long and, and, and mastermind and brainstorm on specific things, but when it comes down to 
really seen change. There's going to have to be some walls that come down, and people are going to have to be vulnerable and, and, and be transparent and know that um, when you're feeling uncomfortable in a mastermind group, if you have a safe space, that's usually when magic is about to start happening because your group who cares about you or the topic or whatever it is that you guys are, are working on is you're pushing it, it outside of that normal envelope um, that it's been in. So that's that's part of the growth process. Yeah, um, I love that. Awesome. And man. then, you know, obviously giving others permission to call you out or to give advice or for you to take advice creating that space where you're giving permission for that kind of feedback and um, interaction to occur is extremely important. And most importantly, at the end of this beautiful cycle is just being willing to take action. So um, I, those were kind of, was, as I was connecting the dots on some of those things, I was thinking, you know, uh, contribution, intention, vulnerability, being transparent with yourself and with others, um, and then giving those people permission to help you or you help them, and then at the end of the day, just being willing to take action through your group. Yeah, I love that, Matt. And really, I think you always kind of connect with the energy of, of that stuff, too. And I, I love the intentions you pulled out of that because I think that is so important. And really, it's an exchange of energy, right? So yep. energy has a way of balancing. So if you're only taking in the group, and then you're even if you take and do nothing with the information, you know, you, you're really, it's a void of energy, you know, it's an energy suck, and that, that's not conducive for the group, but it's beautiful when everybody's putting energy in, and, and then there's, mul the, the energy that you can pull out is multiplied, right? Everyone puts energy in, it creates this almost uh, infinite sea of energy that you can draw from, that's the power of all the groups, so I get to, you know, go mastermind with six or seven of my closest friends, then I come back to my life, and it's like I am the the energy of those seven people all wrapped into one because I'm trying to learn and model and be more like them. Right. That's, that, I think that's what you really got down to. It. And you and to, you have to be vulnerable to do that because yep. nobody can support you at a high level if you're not being real. So I love that you pulled that piece out, Matt. Yep. Cool. So the other thing, you know, again, we've talked about this already is, and if we go to the next slide, Andy, it's remember that complexity is the enemy of execution and you really want to keep it simple. So I want you to guys to focus on really starting with just one, finding one peer partner. And, and so don't make it more complex than it is. You just need one and it can build from there. You know, it, there's an old saying that says to build a powerful large group, you first have to build a powerful small group. And I think that that powerful small group really starts with you getting clear on your purpose. And then you find one other person and then that energy is multiplied and then you can grow it from there. Um, you know, David Osborne and Pat Hyben started with just the two of them as peer partners and now it's grown into an international organization with a hundred guys that get together and in mastermind uh, through GoBundance. So I think that is just a testament to it was. It's very complex now, but it started out very simple, right? And so keep that in mind. So um, if we go to the next slide here too, is as you as you think about who you're going to approach, you know, think about. Are they, a, are they a good counsel or just giving you their opinion? And so somebody that's giving you good counsel needs to be an established expert that is talking from fact, either experience or is educated on the topic at a high level, which in my opinion also requires experience um, in the topic. So I think that you just want to make sure it's you're going to get lots of opinions, by the way, in your mastermind group as well it's sometimes hard to get only fact counsel driven information out of a group but you need to just be aware of what information you listen to and and then and then what list you don't listen to and, and I'll add one other thing there is that we're also very biased creatures human beings are too so 
we need to make sure that we don't turn this slide into an excuse to only listen to what we want to hear because it's probably the things we don't like hearing most that are the things we need to do to change our lives. So there's resistance to good information, but make sure that that the, the council is solid, that you're getting information on the right steps. And you might get a good idea from someone that's an opinion, but then go take that idea and bounce it off of somebody who you know has ex expertise in that area. And they may say, you know what, that opinion is a great idea. I, I would counsel you through fact that this would work and have you go execute it. So just to, thinking about who you can uh, surround yourself with. And then I'll also say this is, you know, your, your peer group, your accountability group, your mastermind group, it's probably not going to be your family. So, you know, Tony Robbins says, love your family, but choose your peer group. So I would not recommend that you have a mastermind group that's all from the, the same family or, you know, if you've got a brother that, that is on the same wavelength or a sister or a cousin that is, maybe add one in, but, you know, just be careful that, that you try to find people who are handpicked by you that they're the right people for you, that can help get you to the next level. I'm sure you can get your family's opinions and that's probably what it would be versus fact-driven counsel at any time. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're thinking of who you would add. So, so the next slide is, um, is on the same paper where you've written out your business, personal priorities, and your 30-day kind of goal. If you've done that, uh, if you haven't done that yet, you know, let's, let's have you do that um, offline or as, as an assignment to building your group. But also make a list of, you know, three or more people right now that you can contact in the next week to ask them to be one of your peer partners. And just think, you know, if you can't think of three people right now, then make a commitment to um, post on our, our, in our community to ask for, to be paired with somebody or to, um, you know, just set a goal that you're going to go meet three people through a networking group or through online communities or wherever that you can um, start aligning yourself with. And Matt, are there any like groups and other places where you know they might be able to interact with people like this that, that would share this uh, passion for helping each other? For masterminding? Yeah, masterminding, meeting people. Um, yeah, well, I mean, obviously, uh, depending on <laughs> what type of mastermind group you're looking for, you know, whether just for for example, if you're lo if you're looking to dive more um, people who play in that space, I started going to real estate investment associations and real estate investment groups that met, you know, the third Wednesday of every month, and you start meeting other people that are with similar mindset that are looking to do similar things. So basically the what I'm getting at is, is, is plug into the networks that you want to learn more about or to be a part of and just start, I know that you know one of the slides talks about is just start making the contacts. Just start having the conversation. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a plane going somewhere or um, and I'm talking about my mastermind group or I'm wearing you know one of our hats that Mike's wearing or a shirt and someone says hey what's that about and then you just talk about it and all of a sudden interest level comes up of wow that's a really cool group how do I become a part of that or wow that's really awesome you guys do that I would love to do that in my local area so it's really my biggest thing is put it out there start having the conversation, start talking with people, start making the contacts, and you'll start to have more of those opportunities come into your space, and then you'll kind of be able to sift through, you know, whether that person might be a fit, or, hey, this is somebody I really want to get to know more about, let's set up a conversation. And then things, it's not, it's usually not a forced um, thing that just comes about. I talk about the difference between a microwave mindset and uh, crockpot mindset. It's somewhat of the same thing with mastermind groups. This isn't something where you just throw a couple ingredients into a microwave and out two minutes later pops out this amazing mastermind group. Go Abundance and some of these other awesome groups that have created something so special outside of what you know the initial creators thought of 
was really created through that crockpot mentality or that crockpot process of, you know, you got to let things, you know, kind of take place and, and go through the process. Um, you add ingredients, you take certain things out, you do, you know, so that's kind of the, the idea behind a mastermind group is it all just starts with that one conversation of that like-minded individual or community like One Life that you put it out there and the right people and the right opportunities and the right resources will organically gravitate towards them or you or the opportunity if you're leading with the right intention behind it and you have the right energy and the right people involved so there's you know a lot of moving factors but I would say it just starts by making that one contact either yeah, face to face or on the phone yeah let's um now let's just roll call, let's role play what that would be so I'll, I'll call you and you be somebody that we would maybe mastermind with perfect um, and and I and I want you to just say no to the first one okay because I want them I want to show them what they how they should handle that because that may be a, a likely response and what I would say is the more no's you get the closer you are to finding an amazing yes the person that's right for you so you're not gonna try to convince them that they should be your peer partner at all so it so I'll just call you up hey hey Matt it's uh, Mike McCarthy how you doing Mike what's going on buddy I'm good to hear from you I'm doing good thanks Cool. Hey, you know, I was just l watching this Google Hangout um, on the One Life community, and they were talking about starting a, a mastermind group of, of one or more people that I could um, share my goals with and get help and support, and at the same time, um, hear and support other people's goals. And so I, I wrote out some personal and business priorities and some things that I need accountability for over the next 30 days. And I was just wondering if maybe you, you would want to get together and share. Um, I'll share with you what I have and you share with me what you have. I know you're a, a talented guy, so maybe we could help each other. Um, uh, that's great, Mike. I, I appreciate that. I'm actually uh, I'm real busy right now and... It, it sounds great. I just, I, you know, I just, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to commit to you right now. Yeah, no worries. That's fine. I understand. I'm looking for the the right person where it's a match. So I, I completely understand. Um, but yeah, maybe we can uh, we can go golfing sometime or something else. So thanks, Matt. I, it was good chatting with you. Cool, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right. Bye. So that you know, it doesn't have to be a. It's it's not a no and now we're not friends or there's any tension there it's just you, you tried that you reached out but I, I do and the other side of it is Matt what would you have said if I had said that uh, and, and you, I really called you for that because I yep. know the kind of person you really are I would say Mike that's awesome man I'm super stoked to hear that you're doing that I'm actually working on a few things myself so maybe we could bounce some ideas off each other and Maybe I'm missing something that you know you might be able to help me out with. So um, I'd love to get together for a quick call or coffee or whatever it is. Okay, That's great, Matt. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And so one of the formats they had me use was to jot down my personal and business priorities and uh, kind of something I want to be held accountable to. So okay. maybe before we get together, you could um, write a few things down. That way we're both ready to go when we get face-to-face. -face. Sounds great. Awesome. So do you want to get together maybe um, the afternoon next week, Thursday or Friday? Let's do it. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. So it's that simple. I mean, it doesn't have to be it complicated. Is. And Well, I and I think one of the things to note is you'll know immediately if someone is in the mindset of having this conversation with you. If you have to convince them or to ask the question 10 different ways to to help them see why there's a benefit in having a mastermind group. It's really, I'm not, I'm not opposed to swimming upstream, but there's no need to when there's plenty of other people abundantly thinking in the same direction you are. Yeah. So I'm more of on the numbers game. I want to, I want to have the conversation with someone who I immediately know is open to having that out of the gate. If I am already working against a negative mindset or working against, um, their excuses, that's totally fine. They may just not be in the right place, space, or mindset for for taking on an opportunity. And it's not fair to the person trying to start the mastermind group or to the other people already involved in the mastermind group to have someone like that come in or try and convince someone. It'll all organically take place 
if you have all of these kind of key ingredients lined up and um, dialed in ahead of time. So I think it was good that we talked about that, and yet if you have to have that conversation with somebody, then next. it's probably not the right fit for your group. Yeah, then it's on to the next next yep. person to see if you can find the, the right connection. And I would recommend that, you know, in this day and age, it's pretty common to um, – to just Facebook somebody and you guys may do that and have success with it but you know my advice would be to really try to call some people and go back to you know the old school way of making an actual connection and and the reason I say that is just you want to try to get a feel for how they re actually respond to it and whether you feel the energy like they're excited about it and you know then kind of plan around it but it would be okay to maybe um, open up the dialogue via Facebook or other connections and then set up a time to talk is, is just a recommendation. Is um, It could work if it was all via text and Facebook to some degree, but I don't think it, the whole point of a mastermind group is to be around each other's energy at a deeper level than that. So Well, and I'll, uh, I'll make a side little note, and Andy, you can go to the next slide, but one of the, the great things about our One Life community and why we're really starting this is, and just so you guys know, we are um, leading with the intention and having this conversation is because um, we've seen the power behind amazing masterminds. We see the One Life community being an amazing platform to launch a lot of these masterminds, not only virtually on our Facebook pages, you know, private messages, groups, stuff like that, um, but we also see the power in creating uh, mastermind opportunities within the One Life community in different areas ac across the country uh, and beyond, and so that's where we're we're really looking to and excited about people post some stuff, some ideas, um, some things that you want to talk about or create in your local area or on the One Life community page. Um, we have one on Flow. We have a Young Hustlers Mastermind group. We have there's there's a lot of groups that are starting to kind of blossom, and they all started six, nine, twelve, you know, two years ago. And to see the growth that's happened, not only with the individuals of the mastermind group, but the mastermind group itself, is um, collectively creating impacting and lasting change for those people and the people coming on board. So, um, just throw it out there and and start kind of creating some of that dialogue with yourself and with other people and see what opportunities start to fall onto your plate in your lap. And if you get the opportunity to be a part of a mastermind group, I challenge you to be the first person to raise your hand and say, I'm in. I'm going to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and stretching myself outside of maybe what I've done previously and see what others um, have to offer and what I can bring to the group as well. And that's really the the power behind this uh, One Life Fully Lived mastermind concept and what we're going for. And um, if you go to the last picture, um, or the last two pictures, Andy, uh, next slide. One more. So this last, uh, this picture is, oh, I like that actually. Your vibes attract your tribe. And um, Mike, is actually, Mike is one of the guys who has, has truly uh, expanded my thinking and awareness and knowledge, not only on spirituality, but um, the way I, as a human being, interact with um, other experiences and people. And um, to see the energy that he brings to our tribe that nobody else can rival it's pretty awesome, and then vice versa to see what Tim Road brings to the table and what all these other guys have collectively brought to the mastermind group. It's pretty awesome. But on the last slide, Andy, one more. Um, there's a picture of mastermind group. So this is just a small picture of one of Mike's Philadelphia mastermind groups. Um, and if you go to the next page, the last one is a really cool picture that I love is... I think that's on an older version, actually. Oh, is it? Okay, so there's a, there's another slide of our, uh, I would say, 10, 11 guys in our mastermind group of Go Abundance that's uh, just got done hiking up the face of the Austrian Alps, and um, to see not only what we've collectively done as in a mastermind group from 
business standpoint and um, you know how to impact our local areas we've also had the opportunity to travel together to meet each other's families to truly invest in each other's happiness well-being uh, making sure that everybody is being held accountable to thriving and living their best lives the way they say they want to so the power of this mastermind group is to truly impact um, the individual and the group itself and we hope you guys will take some of these cool little nuggets, uh, maybe create and map out a, a, an action plan for getting your own group, or let's start a, um, a chain for um, kind of a dialogue for other people to start throwing out one life ideas on how to um, really take this mastermind concept to the next level. So next month, we will be having our uh, Google Hangout. We have some uh, really exciting guests coming on board and we will be sending out the link to everybody in um, email as well as uh, on the Facebook page so take note of all of that Mike did you want to leave us with anything I'll just uh, wrap up by you know thanking everyone in the community for tuning in and and being willing to make a difference in other people's lives and keeping that beautiful cycle alive. And uh, Matt, thanks for joining me on, on the, the Google Hangout today and uh, love chatting with you. And so everybody have a great evening. Thank you. Awesome, man. Thank